Okay, I'm in my workshop. You're going to have to pardon the background noise because I've got a heater running because it's very cold out. I just recently purchased the Shore-Eye battery. And like everybody else says that ends up getting this battery, it feels like there's nothing in the box. It's so lightweight. I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty much like the box is empty. A stock battery typically weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. This weighs 2 pounds. And a particular model for my bike, let me show you here, LFX 14A5 BS12, but you go to their website at shoreye.com and you can look up what your exact model that fits your bike. They take you through the step by step so it's no problem. And uh, because they have limited amount of batteries and sizes, what they do is they just make several, but they give you these adapter pads if you need to make the battery a little bit more thicker to be able to fit in the case. Uh, I don't know if that's the case with mine or not until I pull the other battery. They give you the necessary hardware, uh, more adapter pads, and then here's the battery itself. And I like, and it still it feels like an empty plastic box. They say this is a carbon fiber box. This is supposed to be racing quality or even if it smashes into anything, there is no battery acid to leak out and way less danger. It also has side terminals and top terminals so you can choose whichever one works best for you. So now what we're going to do is go and pull the other battery. I already have the seat off. Depending on your bike, there's different ways. Mine, the switch to uh, operate the seat has long since corroded up. I've tried fixing it several times but it doesn't last any length of time so what I do, this is the latch mechanism, I just stick a long screwdriver through the side, trip the mechanism, flip the seat up and then this is where the seat slides in right here so basically it just it flips up, you pull it forward, the seat comes out. Every bike's different. That's why I'm not showing the details of this. And then I have this mechanism right here covering the top of my battery. It's held by a little clamp that goes into this one screw here and then it clips underneath this bar so it's just one screw and you have full access to your battery. Now my advice, if you have a battery like this where it's really close to the frame and other metal stuff, take the negative post loose first and move the negative post way out of the way. Tuck it underneath somewhere where it's not going to touch. Then when you put a wrench on the positive side, even if you hit something on the frame, you're not going to be making sparks, possibly uh, shocking yourself, catching on fire, something like that. And believe me, you can get shocked by a 12 volt battery. I've had it happen before. It's not as easy as 110 volts, but yes, you can get shocked, you can get burned, you can have all kinds of things happen. You can have a hydrogen explosion. So make sure not to disconnect this positive until the negative is complete. Now, just looking at the battery, I can't really tell. It looks approximately the same size, but let's pull it out first. And then I've already got this one pre loosened up, so all I'm going to do is take it out by hand and then lift the battery out. We'll put this over my workbench and now this one it's got a little tube here that's something you're not going to need with your new battery you're not going to need the overflow tube so I'm just going to reach down and kind of loosen it up and pull it loose and pull the battery out now I'm not going to remove it I'm going to leave you can see the tube right there I'm going to leave the tube in there because you never know something could happen when I'm on a trip or something I may have to end up replacing a battery because uh, you know even if the Shore Eye is an excellent battery they're not perfect. I'm sure there's some of those that end up being dead. So if on the road I have to swap batteries real fast and run into a Walmart or something like that and just get a cheap lead acid battery to get by, I want that overflow tube to be there. So I'll just leave that in place. It's not hurting anything, so it's fine where it's at. So let's go over to the workbench and take a look. And by golly, I would say... They are pretty, gosh darn near identical, I would say, yeah. I would call them pretty much identical, so I don't end up having to use any of these pads. If uh, if you do, I would recommend, like they said, put the pads on the battery in the battery case, but if you see the way mine is set up, I don't really have sidewalls on my battery case, so what I would probably have to do is actually cut the pads and stick them to the side of the battery. I don't know if that would hurt anything, but if I had to do it, that's the only way I could really do it on my bike, so... I'm going to take the plastic pieces off and then let's install it and see what happens.
They say this is pre-charged and it will hold about 90% of its charge even for up to one year, so that's good. And I don't know about you, but I hate doing maintenance on batteries too because you have to do it several times a year, especially if you trickle charge them a lot. You're going to have to end up doing quite a bit of maintenance. And I have in the past accidentally not done maintenance good enough on a battery, let the water go too low, and then the battery ends up damaged. Now one thing, you can use these as far as I can tell, you can use these with a standard charger except never ever ever use the desulfonating part on this battery. What they do on this is they actually send some jolts of high electricity, high voltage, into this battery if it's sulfonated and that's the only problem and sometimes the battery can recover. But you do not want on this style of battery, you don't want those pulses of high voltage coming to this battery. You will damage it. And they tell you that, so I would say myself to just not take a chance, I would not even use a battery that has that setting on it because you know what's going to happen. One time you're going to forget the setting and you're going to end up damaging the battery. So they're not that expensive. Spend the 30, 40 bucks and get yourself just a standard battery charger. I usually have one that runs somewhere about maybe one and a half amps for the trickle charge and anywhere from uh, about seven to 10 amps for the, for the main charge to bring it up. So let's put it on in here. And there we go, fits in fine. It's gonna actually be just like the other battery wiggles around a little bit. Once the, the it's clipped in place here and bolted down, it shouldn't wiggle at all. If it does, I may take a little piece of padding and just put on top of here just to press it down a little bit more. So I'm not gonna bore you with watching me putting the connections together. I'm gonna skip that part and we're gonna go straight to when I have it connected up and see how the bike starts. Okay, just as a precautionary note, when you first put this battery in, just like with any battery, do not connect the negative first. Leave the negative cable way out of the way. Connect the positive first. That way if you touch anything, no sparks, nothing's going to happen. Then when you've gotten that tightened all the way, make sure it's completely tightened and you're done with it. Then start connecting your negative side. That way you won't run into any problems. So now it's just a matter of putting the bike back together. Okay, I have the junction box back over the top of the battery. I have the screw clamp tightening it down. <clears throat> it's also clipped underneath this place with a plastic clip and if I grab a hold of it it's moving just a little bit. See? I'm not liking that. I don't want it to move like that so what we're going to do is we're going to take this off and we're going to put a little piece of padding underneath so that it has a little bit more downward pressure like it does on the stock battery. Okay I've stuck a thin piece of padding on top just to give it a little bit more downward pressure and hopefully that will take care of the wiggling problem. Okay, now we take it and try to move it, and it's not moving anywhere. So it's got the correct amount of downward pressure on it. I could have put it on the back of this thing or on the top of the battery. I just chose to put it on the top of the battery. I don't think it'll really make a difference that anybody's going to notice, or the battery's going to notice. So that solved that problem. Now all we need to do is see how it cranks. So let's put the key on. Make sure it's in neutral, which it is. Let's put the choke on. Switches on. Do a little more choke. Yeah, choke isn't on enough. Can't do this two-handed. Yeah, I can. Well, this is interesting. I cranked it over three different times. It almost started. Then when I put the choke on a little bit more to try for a fourth time, choked all the way on again. This is what I get. If I can't even do four different times and get it to fire up with uh, four tries, I'm not calling this a good uh, a good battery, so uh, sure I. Maybe you do make good batteries, but uh, this one isn't looking too good. If I'd have gotten it started by the third crank, I would have thought it was a good battery, but if it can't do it for four times, 
not good. I guess we'll be packing this one up and sending it back. Good thing I kept the receipt and everything.